Hi, Jim. Uh, I'm Steve Faber, uh, Marv and Corrine Faber's son. Uh, I appreciate your uh, inviting me to sit with you and to do this video uh, for the purposes of the 150th uh, anniversary celebration of the St. Cloud Area Chamber of Commerce, of which my father was very involved for a number of years. So uh, reflecting back and thinking about what might be uh, of benefit to those that might watch this video is, you know, I think my dad got involved in the Chamber of Commerce United Way and volunteered for a number of organizations like that because it gave him an opportunity, a chance to meet with people, uh, to work with people and to try to come up with solutions that benefited people. I know at the bank where he worked principally his entire career, the First American National Bank, uh, that was a good fit for him because uh, people would come in and they'd have needs. They'd need to get a car loan, a home loan, a, you know, a loan for uh, their, their child's education, uh, whatever it might be. And you know, I think he was very good at listening. Uh, he was very good at coaching them. Maybe at times you know, he thought that the loan wasn't something that he wanted to make because it was you know, putting people too far out on the, out, out on the edge. Uh, but, you know, it gave him an opportunity to meet with people and try to help people. And I think that, you know, one of the things that I realized about my father was that he always had time for people. Um, you know, we get, you know, my, myself personally, I, I get involved in the day-to-day -day activities, just a lot of things to do. And, and sometimes when people come up and ask for time, you're in a rush to find out what it is that they want and kind of move on and, and, and get to the next piece of business. Uh, as I was growing up, it was, it was like, for instance, going to Crossroads and in, in, in having a 10 minute trip was, you know, near to impossible because he'd run into a half a dozen people that wanted to say hello and talk about something. But regardless of whether he had time or not, he always, you know, listened and, 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 and showed consideration to the people that came up to him and said hello and wanted to talk. So I, I, I think that uh, regardless of one's socioeconomic background, uh, you know, or status in the community, uh, he always had time to meet with people. I remember one time as a small child, um, I was seated at the bank waiting for my father to, you know, finish with the person that he was meeting with. And after a couple of minutes, one of the, uh, you know, larger businessmen in the, in the St. Cloud area came in and and needed and, and, and urgently, I guess, needed to see my father. So he interrupted my father uh, in the meeting that he was in, poked his head in the door and said, you know, Marv, I need to see you right away. And uh, my dad said, uh, you know, can you not see I'm, I'm meeting with somebody? Uh, and in 20 minutes, I, you know, 15, 20 minutes, I should be finished and then I can meet with you. Well, the fellow that he was meeting with was indigent and, and didn't have significant savings, I'm sure but had a need for, you know, tracking his money and spending his money. And, and my dad met with him for, you know, a period of time. And I know it was a fellow that my dad had met with, you know, annually and, 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 and quite often. But he finished that 20 minutes with this fellow. And then after that, you know, saw the gentleman that probably had some fairly significant accounts at the bank. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, that's an example of, you know, leading by the way, you know, uh, leading by example, you know. It, uh, I don't think my dad was too much of a preachy guy, but you know, he, he I, I think he pretty much, you know, led by example and, and uh, you know, that's the way he got his point across. Uh, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing. When I, when I look at my life, I've been eternally blessed with a lot of good things. I mean, I, you know, no, no complaints. But losing, losing my father at 57 years of age, um, especially now, you know, you, you probably don't realize it that much when you're 30 years old. I mean, it's a big loss. But reflecting back and, and not having a father when you're 30 and, you know, 30 to, you know, my 50, I'm two years older than my dad at the moment, you know, than my dad lived to be. 
But, you know, all the things that I've been blessed with, uh, you know, the leveler that, you know, brings it back to ground zero, balances things out pretty well as, you know, losing my dad at age 57. That, uh, that's not a, you know, and if I look at my father and all the blessings that he's had and the friends that he had and the good things that he was able to do, um, there were some difficulties for he as well. My, my sister was born with some conditions and it was difficult uh, you know, it was touch and go for the first three years of her life as to whether she'd live or not. And she subsequently passed away four years after he did. Uh, and I know that there w those were difficult and trying times. And I have a 27-year-old daughter. And if, and if I had to go through the, the uh, health issues with my daughter that my dad went through with my sister Diane, uh, you know, that certainly would have been difficult for him as well. But... You know, when I look back at it, he had lots of friends. He knew who he was. He, he, he was comfortable in his own skin. Uh, he had simple pleasures. Uh, he didn't expect much. Uh, he didn't need wealth to be happy. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the day, uh, all the wonderful and the great things that he did, I think we need to, you know, give some credit to my mother because without a partner you know, without the partner that she was to my dad, uh, you know, I doubt very much that my dad would have been who he was and become who he became. So I think, you know, it takes two to, you know, there's uh, good consideration that should give, be given to my mother for all the, you know, wonderful things my father did.